You may have seen it yesterday, and people are still talking about it today, that NASA and astronomers, they had that big announcement that seven Earth-sized planets, all rocky, these seven planets, uh, they orbit a dwarf star. So their sun, um, there's so much to talk about. We're even going to involve Amir in this at some point. Uh, Amir, maybe you should just wheel in now because we're all kind of geeking out. <laughs> so first and foremost, why this is so cool um, is that these Earth-sized planets, three of them can potentially harbor life. So seven of them are Earth-like. They're very rocky. But the three are in that Goldilocks zone, so it's not too hot, not too cold, that, that perfect distance between them and their parent star, their dwarf sun, because this is a dwarf sun, where they can sustain life, water, carbon. So that's incredible. And there's three of them to choose from. Um, let me see what I can read from the article, because I just can't with this. So it says here, uh, quote, the planets orbit a dwarf star named Trappist-1, or negative 1, about 40 light years or 235 trillion miles from Earth. You talked about the space travel of that. Yeah. How yeah. long would it take? Um, so, like, I looked at, some people did the math. Based on our fastest speed that we've ever done with one of the probes that we've sent to space, it would take us over 700,000 years to oh. Which is, that's they, close, though. They that's can, not... they can, yeah, cosmically, cosmic language, right. that is close. And they can, uh... They can look really closely and monitor these planets and they can look at like the atmosphere and see what kind of chemicals and compounds are coming from it to, to understand if life is being yeah. right. harbored there. And a, another really cool thing that they talked about is, uh, yes, the distance is, is, is pivotal, right? Because that means you can sustain life, that perfect zone, that Goldilocks zone. But they also talked about that their dwarf, their, their dwarf star, their sun is, it's smaller than our sun, but because it's closer, like if I were to be on that planet, it would appear much bigger to me. And because it's dimmer, it's not as hot, it would be like a salmon color. Yeah. So can Crazy, you imagine right? just standing there? Yeah, you're standing there, you look, the sun's much bigger, even though technically it's not bigger than our sun, but it's, it appears bigger. It's salmon, it's dim. They said it would still be like more bright than, than moonlight. Yeah but it would be a dim salmon colored light. That's some that's some really sexy lighting. And then <laughs> let's, we have another picture too, don't we? Oh, so this is, okay, so this is their solar system. So their solar system is really like compact, right? It's yeah. close. Very close together. Yeah, so all, all the planets could fit within the orbit of Mercury. Yeah, that's crazy. So crazy. Doesn't it, doesn't it even more How over- cool. Doesn't it make you feel like First of all, I've always thought we were not alone. Of I always course. thought there was other planets, but it also makes you realize how how small we really are. Like how like we uh, hum, humans too. Like we're, we're it's so, so fragile. And there's so much more out there. My only fear is that on these planets, there's some really like heinous aliens that are no. just like come and visit us, and then we're gonna I'm gonna take out all of humanity. I've always felt strongly that when we do find life out there, because there is life out there, I believe, when we do find life, that it'll be a very highly evolved, intelligent uh, species. They and all I, are so I, until. And that's what the astronomers said. The astronomers for you know all this time, they've been looking at, uh, or at least in recent times, they've been looking at trying to locate these, these suns that, ha that are older, that have been around for a long time, because then that would indicate that if they're in that, that, hab that habitable, habitable yeah. zone, that the, um, these species would be evolved because the sun itself, because you need that parent star to have that perfect uh, temperature, that it's old enough where you would have an evolved species, not like a new species, where it's like, right. you know, some organism that's just now growing because there's carbon and water. So it's so cool. It and I cool. think, I don't know if it's gonna be in our century or in our lifetime. generation lifetime where we're going to discover life and communicate with life whatever that may be but i think it's in, it's so entitled of us to think that we're the only people in Absolutely. this massive 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 galaxies right. and galaxies and it's just this huge universe i mean we know very little about outer space and, and what's out there and Absolutely. what's out there and this, this sure. is just this is just further proof why this is so important to have these these planets that are in that perfect zone three of them three of them and seven of them being rocky and Earth-like. That is so cool. So, and have their little solar system. It's just, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was way so, over the moon on this one, you guys. Oh, <laughs> good job. All right. Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. And uh, we'll see you next time on Pop Trigger.